Okay, I will show you guys how to graph the function x to the x power. And here are some prep work that we have to do first. So let me write down some notes for you guys. Here is note number one. In fact, here we actually have a pretty dangerous number, and that's a number zero. Suppose x is equal to zero, we are trying to calculate f of zero. This means I have to plug in zero into here and here, and we have zero to the zero's power right here, right? However, if you are just talking about a usual computation, zero to the zero power, this is undefined. And you see, we are not talking about limits whatsoever. In that case, for usual computation, zero to a zero, we actually don't have an answer for that, right? So we'll just you know, make that clear first. And then the second thing is that, in this situation, x to x power, this is actually not an exponential function because the base changes as well. We have x as the base raised to a power, right? Another thing we have to be careful right here is that we are going to make sure x cannot be negative, right? I just want to have the positive x values. And why is that the case? Well, suppose the following. Suppose that if x is a negative number, and let me just give you guys an example, such as x equals to negative 1 half, right? Then what are we going to end up with? Plugging negative 1 half into this x and that x, we will end up with parentheses negative 1 half raised to the negative 1 half power. And check this out. Let's focus on the negative power here. The negative power tells us to bring this down to the denominator, right? So we will have 1 over parentheses with that, which is negative 1 half, and then raised to the positive 1 half power right here, right? And then you will see that now this positive 1 half power, well, it's pretty much the square root of this negative 1 half. You will see this is 1 over this becomes a square root, and then we have that negative 1 half inside of the square root. And of course, we're trying to graph this with zero numbers, right? We are not talking about complex numbers whatsoever. When we have a negative inside of the square root, this is not good, right? It's complex. We cannot graph that. And you may be wondering, OK, what happens if x is equal to negative 2 or negative 3? Yes, you can plug in negative 2 or negative 3 into x, and then you actually end up with a nice value. But whenever you are talking about graphing functions, you want to make sure that the function is as continuous as possible. So we just want to make sure that x cannot be negative numbers, right? OK, combining these two ideas, I can tell you here, third part is that we can talk about the domain of this function, which is the set of x values such that I don't want x to be negative. I don't want x to be 0. Otherwise, this is undefined. In other words, I just want x to be greater than 0. And that will be the domain for this function. OK? Now, as we talk about it, yes, 0 to a 0 is undefined when x is exactly equal to 0. But what if x is slightly bigger than 0, right? And that's the idea of the limit. So let me write it down for you guys right here. Suppose I want to take the limit as x goes to 0, but I don't want x to be negative neither. So let's take a look of the x approach to 0 from the positive direction. You can think about this right here as being x equal to 0 0.00001. And then plugging that number into here and here, it will actually work in that case. Anyway, this right here, x to x power, this, in fact, it turns out to be a nice value, 1. Why? Because I did a video for you guys already. Be sure to check that out, OK? So that's something that we have to uh, keep in mind as well. And so these are the four points, right? Uh, the four notes that I want to make first. Now, is this function always increasing? It looks like it when x is bigger than 1. But in fact, there's actually a critical number that's not at 1. So to do that, we actually have to take the derivative of this and then set it equal to 0 and find out any potential minimum or maximum, right? So right here, let me just put down, this is my fifth uh, note right here. 
let's differentiate that function. And when I do that, I will just tell you guys that, hey, when we differentiate x to the x power, this right here, in fact, we'll get x to the x times 1 plus ln x, right? How do we know? Because I did a video for you guys already, all right? Anyway, we differentiated this function, and as usual, we are going to set this equal to 0 for any potential critical numbers, right? Now, this right here, x to the x power, this is never 0. Why? Because 0 to a 0 is undefined, all right? So that's pretty much like the best hope that we have, but that's actually not <laughs> doable. So we just want to set 1 plus ln x equal to 0, right? That's the only part we have to worry about. And now we can just subtract 1 on both sides. Therefore, ln x equals to negative 1. And then we can do e to this power, e to that power. So x is equal to e to the negative 1. If you would like, you can write it down as 1 over e. So we know that critical value or critical point is at x equal to negative 1, right? And now this is the first derivative test. So I will just write it down right here for you guys. We have a number line like this, right? And I don't want this to be 0, so let me just do like this. This is 0, but I don't want x to be 0. Anything before 0 is bad. Anyway, when we have 1 over e, let me just say this right here somewhere. As usual, this is the first derivative test. I will use f prime for that notation. Okay, what we do is we pick a number in between of 0 and 1 over e into here and then try to see if it's positive or negative first derivative, right? So perhaps we can pick, well, let's say I want to pick 1 over e squared somewhere, so which is like this, right? By the way, 1 over e squared is not halfway of 1 over e. But anyway, plugging 1 over e squared, which is definitely smaller than 1 over e and still positive, plugging to here, we get this is always positive, so it doesn't matter, right? This right here, we will end up, well, let me just put down uh, always positive times 1 plus ln of 1 over e squared, which is the same as e to the negative 2, right? And now you see this and that will cancel, and this is 1 minus 2, which is something positive, times 1 minus 2, which is negative, right? So f prime is going to be negative on the interval from 0 to 1 over e. And now, pick a number that's bigger than 1 over e. Pick the easy number, let's say 1. So let me just choose, let's say, 1 right here, right? And once again, 1, of course, is not like twice as big as 1 over e. Let me just make it right here, okay? Let's say 1. 1 plug into here, we get 1 to the 1, right? So of course, positive, and then 1 plus ln 1. This is just 1. This is 1, and this is actually 0, so we have 1. So of course, this is positive, right? Anyway, so I think sure it gets all the work right here. And then, right here, we can say that the first derivative is positive uh, on the interval when x is bigger than 1 over e. So you can say at 1 over e, the function before that is going down because it's negative, right? Because the first derivative is negative. And then after that, the first derivative is positive, so the function is going up. We will have a minimum here, right here, right? So, in fact, this relative minimum happens to be the absolute minimum as well. So I can tell you, here is the lowest point. Absolute minimum at x equal to 1 over e, all right? And anything after that, of course, the function will just keep going up forever. And now, I'm going to erase here. I'll show you guys the final graph. So, these are the ideas that we need. And of course, it's easy to see, when x is approaching to infinity, the function is of course going to infinity. Infinity to the infinity power, that's a lot, right? Okay, and finally, we can talk about the graph. And of course, we'll use all the information that we have. So, 
When x is equal to 0, you know the function is undefined. 0 to 0 is undefined, right? But when you are approaching to 0 from the right-hand side, you know the limit is equal to 1. So to show that on the graph, I will just put on open circle because once again, at 0, it's undefined. So I will just make sure I have an open circle. And I do have the function that's approaching to 1 from the right-hand side, all right? Anyway, from 0 to 1 over e, the function is decreasing because the first derivative is negative. So I'll just, you know, just draw it down like this. And then at 1 over e, we have the relative minimum, which is also the absolute minimum, okay? And then we pretty much will be right here. And then after 1 over e, it goes up. And of course, when x is exactly equal to 1, plug it into here, 1 to the first power is of course 1. So be sure you should have that point as well, right? Just to make it nice. So it's like this, going down and then going up. And in fact, this is crazier than exponential function because not only the power is getting bigger and bigger, but the base is also getting bigger and bigger as well. So this is how the graph of x to the x power look like. So let me just write it down. y is equal to x to the x. Okay, and I think that's pretty much it. But before we go, I would like to tell you 1 over e, it's approximately 0 0.368, all right? And then when you're plugging 1 over e into x to the x power, you get this value here, which is this minimum. The y value is approximately 0 0.692, all right? Just some nice touch. Anyway, that's it. So good. Can I say something about the price? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Ideas, meal! Be done and be done!